welcome to another episode of The Man Space. Kunle and I are delighted and honored week after week to be featuring different gentlemen from different parts of the world to showcase the impact they are creating and how are they dealing with their emotional and uh, professional challenges and successes and how are they bringing all of this together to truly create lasting impact for themselves and the communities they serve. And today is not going to be any different. You are going to meet an exceptional gentleman from Ghana who is bringing us a lot of different talents and capabilities. And as you watch this episode, I want you to keep in mind, we don't need to be good at just one thing. If you have passion for multiple things, if you're good at multiple things, embrace them all. I always part jokingly say, I don't ever want to be a one trick pony. I want to be an entire circus. That way life is fun. And when one act is no longer generating economic prosperity, the other acts can. And it gives us resiliency, it gives us scalability and truly stabilizes life. So Kunle, take it away. We cannot wait for our audience to meet our guest today. Thank you so much, Dr. Kaz. Just like you said, I know a lot of people will have so many questions at the tip of their tongues about who our guest is today. And they must have been having their fingers crossed. The time is right to let the cat out of the bag, even though they might be seen on their screen. But our guest today is a man of too many volumes for a brief text. Just like you mentioned earlier on, Dr. Kaz is an exceptional human being who is multi-talented, multi-faceted, multi-dimensional, who does a lot of things and brings energy into whatever space you find him. And so we are glad to have none other but Ambassador Benjamin Owusu Ansa on the man space. He is a cybersecurity expert and trainer. He is also a master of ceremony extraordinaire. He brings life to events, he anchors, and no wonder people tag him the event oxygen. We are glad to have you in our midst today, discuss a whole lot of things, how you juggle all of these things together, delve into cybersecurity, which is your passion, and also delve into event anchoring, which is also another passion of yours. Welcome to the Man Space, Ambassador Benjamin. <laughs> Thank you. I, I'm just listening to it. I'm like, am I about to introduce the speaker or who is the next to speak? And then, <laughs> and then he mentions my name at the tail end of it. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Cass. Thank you, Kunle, my brother from Nigeria. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'm good. I'm good to be here. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to be here. Sure. Thank you so much. I, I want I want to start with um, one thing that my I be in the mind of the people when I, I mean, I was finding words to put together your introduction as someone who is multi-dimensional, multi-talented. A lot of men struggle with this and people try to confine themselves into one area and suppress that other part of themselves. You are an exception to this. I have seen you thrive in so many areas, being a cybersecurity expert. And then you also go to the fun aspect of life, anchoring event, bringing life to event and all the rest. So you are, you've been able to maintain a striking balance in all of these areas and some other areas of life generally. How do you do this? And what advice can you give to our men who are willing to express themselves? Because life, I know, is all about expression finding expression in their several talents and making it work just as you are doing. 
Right, find expression in other talents. So I, I would just say this. So you, you just need to find that one talent, you hone on to it, and then the others are going to just come up. So uh, I started just like a normal person, just with one thing. But whilst I was in my field, I'm in tech field, I just said to myself that I want to know more about other industries. You understand? That was when, before I had even gone into tech, I was just wandering around. I said, I want to find myself in all other industries. And what can help me do that? Then uh, I settled on technology. That's way, I think that's somewhere in the nine, 90s. So was it 90s? Yeah. A lot of parts of the 90s. That's when I just said, okay, let me just move into tech because I foresaw that technology was going to be the rails on which all other industries were going to run. So if I want to have myself in this other industry, then let me get on to tech where I'll be able to function in the other area. So that's how it happened. So from tech, I was just doing my normal stuff in tech until one day when I had to lose that job. <laughs> Everything was just I mean, concentrated on that part. So when I lost that job, then I said, I said to myself, how do I then function in these other industries that I said I wanted to be, then the other parts of me started coming up. Then I started saying, let me focus on one. Whilst I was focusing on one along the way, the others started dropping. So I ended up sewing a coat of many colors and I just bring the color which is needed at what time out. So that's how I started it. It wasn't all clear at the beginning, but I had glimpses of that. And, and sometimes I was just kind of afraid if I could do all that, but I just targeted one that was technology. So I started in that area. And then it built up from there. When clients had issues and they call on me to come and help them solve their issues, for some strange reason, my whole team, when they have issues and then they are referred to them, they get back to the call center person that they want Benjamin to come and resolve their issue for them. This is because when I go there, I just don't go and then solve straight the issue. I try to understand their understanding of how the issue happened so I can give a solution which will be permanent. So I kind of engage them. And whilst I was engaging them, Conley, the truth was that I was building my interpersonal relationship with them. So in the course of duty, I had to just go for uh, a program. And when I got to the program, the master of ceremony wasn't around. And my manager just looked at me and said, Ben, up the stage, <laughs> up the stage to anchor the event. And that was it. When I went there and I handled the event, they came to me that, are you a professional master of ceremony? And I said, no, I don't do that. This is my job. So one thing led to the other, the other, and now here we are. I go into places to go for tech businesses and I'm given a hosting business. I go in for a hosting business and I'm being given a tech business. So now it's kind of intertwined, it's among me. So I keep bringing them out as and when it is needed. So uh, you can balance it. There is a balance. It's just like sitting on the bicycle. Your first paddle is sometimes scary. But when you get it moving, the next step comes in. The next step comes in. The time you realize you live in the steering of the bike and then you'll be lifting your hands up and then you'll be going down the hill. So that's how I started. Fascinating. And the joy with which you talk about it says it all, Benjamin. And what stands out for me is a lot of times people go and pick one thing and they feel they're stuck just doing it for the rest of their lives. It's like don't going to a buffet and saying, oh, I love steak, I'm gonna eat steak. Well, for the rest of your life, every meal you just can't eat steak. It gets sickening after a while. And knowing and understanding the very different passions and talents one has, cultivating them actually makes you happier. Talk to us a little bit about the psychological and the spiritual healing that happens when you use all your talent to live your life instead of living it in a single dimension. I'll just say it's peaceful. It's so peaceful because you can wake me up at 4 a.m. 
Ghana time, and then just tell me there is an event happening at 4.30, and I'll get there at 4.25 to run the event for you. It's so peaceful because I feel like I'm in my domain and I can easily express myself. Call me at 4 a.m. Ghana time and say, hey, we're going to have a cybersecurity awareness training for this crop of people in this part of Accra. And then you just get me there. I'll get onto the bus and I'll be putting on my shoes on the bus because there is that peace that I have that I'm going to talk to people about something that I know about, about something that I need to share with them about. So that brings that kind of peace to you. So when you're doing it, it's not as if uh, you've been pressured to do. It's not as if you are being forced to do. And you don't see, or I don't see it as, okay, this is what is putting food on my table. So I have to bulldoze my way through. If I had to hit people, if I had to step on toes together, I would be, no. That passion of making sure that I flow through that place is easy. So I, I sometimes don't say I'm, I'm not chasing titles. I'm not chasing the money. But that passion within me is driving me to make sure that what needs to be done is being done. And that gives me that sense of peace any day, any time when I wake up in the morning. And then it makes me give that kind of uh, appreciation to my maker that I've been able to identify those hidden gifts and talents in me to use for mankind. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. And uh, I think the energy, the peace also that you mentioned is even radiating in the Zoom room we are right now while we are having this discussion. And it shows um, how important it is when you find expression in what you are passionate about, the peace that comes with it. Um, I, I know that we will still have to ask you questions as regards your cybersecurity expertise, but I want to bring this up. The name Event Oxygen, how did it come to play? Because oxygen is very important. Without, I mean, oxygen is like the food to the brain. Why did people call you that? And then what are the things you do during an event that, you know, that brings life to those events? Because I know a lot of people might be watching and maybe the next client also might be watching some, and that's what we do at the man's space, giving that platform, that freedom to really make our guests express themselves and thrive also within. Benjamin. <laughs> I'm sure you can feel the oxygen already in the atmosphere wherever you are now, because uh, that, that's that's me. I always want people to be happy and I want people to enjoy the space they find themselves in at any given time. So um, I once remember I, I attended a funeral and then when people saw me, they started laughing. I'm like, what's wrong here? Because this is supposed to be a solemn kind of uh uh, occasion but i got in there and i was bubbling with energy all around and then uh, it became infectious so this is what i'm saying so when i come to an event i'm looking at the stakeholders of the event i'm looking at the audience i'm looking at the, the organizer and then i'm looking at the other partners of the event i i don't take anyone for granted from the one who handles the sound from the one who is ushering the people to the auditorium from the speakers and then myself. So I, 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 I place everyone on the same platform and I give the respect to everyone. So when I go up the stage, I know that people coming in there with different kinds of ideas. People are coming in to make connections. People are coming in to get new ideas. People are coming to acquire new knowledge. Others who are coming to see how the event was organized. Now, this is this. When there is no oxygen in that room, obviously they are going to be stifled. People are going to suffocate and die. So why don't I come in with that kind of ambience, that kind of uh, loveliness into the auditorium or into the room or into any space you give me and let it be a memorable event that I get onto the stage and that's what radiates all around. I get to understand the event. I get to understand the people in there. Sometimes I don't even know all the people in there, but then our first interaction lets us know who is in here, what kind of things they want to do and how they want the whole event to go about. Then, my show me, I'm that person who can just sit quiet. 
<laughs> I always want things to be done. So once I get there, I make sure I involve everyone on, on or in the auditorium. I involve every person. So that kind of uh, connection, that kind of connection, that kind of connection. Once I'm able to connect with them, the energy flow. So when I'm going in there, I'm always with this mindset that I'm having my own tube. The audience are also having their own tube. How do I connect for the oxygen to flow? So some way, somehow, I'm able to find that way. And once it connects, the oxygen flows there. So that was how the name came about. I think, uh, the, the, uh, well, I don't know who even brought that name about, but it became a name. And everyone was wants it to be identified with it. Because I, last event I went, when I finished and I came up, then someone came. Did you dreamt of giving this name to yourself? I said, what name? He said, the event oxygen. I said, I don't know. He said, that was what you just did. And it, it was, it was, it was just that everyone talked about it. So that kind of connection that I'm able to make with the people in there. And then the subject that we are discussing brings the event to life. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. That is amazing. And we want people who can infuse oxygen into every situation because God knows most of the people are sucking out all the oxygen, right? That is what the society is about. And then that creates stress, that creates mental health issues, that creates conflict. The whole world is full of situations like this. So maybe we need to have you come and talk to the U.S. Congress and infuse ah. oxygen into some very important places around the world, right? What's coming up for me is just as much as you are introducing oxygen and breathability and peace and sanity into events and scenarios, cybersecurity is doing the same thing in a different way. It's creating the environment of engagement for business or individuals in that cyberspace safe and enjoyable. Talk to us a little bit about how some of the characteristics and capabilities that makes you successful in this event space, in your speaking space, how that translates into your cybersecurity, because most people don't understand the connection. Right, I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. It's always a problem when you're talking about that. I know. But this is the thing. I'm going through my career or my journey, I realized that most of my people are always technical people. They, they always want to do the technical stuff. So one, when you, you, you we get a tech person rising to the ranks, they would have almost and almost any time been so technical that they are not able to break the communication barrier between themselves and then senior management for decisions to be made. So I remember those back days, we always have our budget being rejected <laughs> because we go for our meeting and we're not able to express ourselves so well for the board to understand what we're talking about. So there was always that kind of gap. So I said to myself, why don't I build myself up to become that bridge that will kind of bridge the gap between technical people and then decision-making people in organization. So this is the... That's where I found my voice. That I said, okay, if I'm able to communicate that well with my background, I'll be able to send a message across. Then came cybersecurity into the situation. I mean, from the pandemic time, oh goodness, the bad guys or the bad people actually got us where they wanted us to be always. That is into the cyberspace. And getting us into the cyberspace was where they would be able to maneuver and have their ways throughout for us. Then, boom, they got in there. So I said, let me be able to build myself so I can communicate this information so well to people so that they can understand the dangers when they get online. That is when their cyber path came in. And I'm able to go around and I'm able to run awareness training for people to understand the dangers when it comes to cyber attacks and cyber related issues, right? Wow, that's so amazing. 
I, I can just but commend what you're doing, I mean, in the cyberspace, because the cyberspace needs, you know, a lot of um, awareness. People who make use of the cyberspace need a lot of awareness. And this is one of the things you are doing. And uh, as a matter of fact, you have an NGO called Cyber Bells in this regard. Um, I want you to briefly talk to us about what this NGO is all about, what you are taking to people and what you want to achieve, I mean, in this area and what you are creating in the cyberspace with the NGO. You're muted, Benjamin. Sorry. Yeah, so as the name sounds, cyber bells. So it means we're ringing the bells for cybersecurity awareness and that's the whole thing. Now, I, I, I came up with this NGO targeting child online protection, that is targeting children, because I realized that they are the next generation and they are people who are going to take charge of the cyberspace. And when we are not able to give them the training at that early stage, and then they get onto the main platform, yeah, they are going to be bundled up by this uh, bad people again. So what Cyber Bells does is that we go from school to school, targeting young people, and then giving them the awareness. Now, this is the funny thing. When you kind of start talking about cybersecurity, because of its dangers and then hacking and stuff, you get people shunning away from it. So what we decided to do is this. We're not only going there to just talk about cybersecurity. We merge with uh, the Pan-African Arts Ambassador, who comes in and talk about visual arts. Now, when you go in, mostly you go and then you find about 50 children in the classroom waiting for you because they want to learn about cybersecurity. Now he comes in first and then he does is talking about his journey through uh, the creative art space. Now, by the time he's done on his 20th minute, the whole place is full up. When the whole place is full up, then we go in and we talk about the dangers of cybersecurity awareness to the student. They are all on their mobile phones. They are all on their tablets. They are all on their laptops. And the dangers are that these people don't know the dangers they are getting themselves into. Some will say, but what information do I have to lose? And then I get there and I'm being hacked. I always tell them, you might not be the, the target. Maybe the headmaster of your school is the target, but you have a connection to your headmaster. So when they get to you, they've got into your headmaster. Maybe they want your parents. You have connection to your parents. They don't have that connection. But the mere fact that they are able to get into your device and then impersonate you, they will be able to get to your parents. So that is the message we go around with. And then we bring them up to speed so they become aware of all these social engineering tactics that might cause a problem to themselves or to their parents. That is a fascinating uh, contribution because you are changing their mindset when it's in its developmental stage. So that is fantastic work you do. I know we can talk for hours, but it's funny how time flies by when we're having fun. So why don't you take a moment and tell us how our audience can get a hold of you and a nugget of wisdom for the men who are part of our community and the mothers who raise their sons. What words of wisdom do you have? And then Kunle is going to take it away to wrap this up. Right. So I always share this story. There was this gentleman who was uh, who joined the Olympics. We just had the Olympics uh, some few days back. Now he was running the four by four meter race. When he took off first. And he got to the partner to hand over the baton to him. He did something strange. Instead of handing the baton over to him, he turned back and threw the baton all the way to the starting line. Now, when he did that, his next person that he was supposed to hand the baton to had to run a 100-meter race back to the starting line. When he picked the baton, he ran another 100-meter race before he started to run his own 100-meter race. Now, by the time he did that, he had gone almost 300 meters. This is what I say. This is our time for us to hand the baton well to the next generation. And if we don't have that information, if we don't have that knowledge to do that, 
this scenario is going to happen. We're going to throw the next generation 100 meters behind. They will have to run 100 meters to pick it up, come back to the starting point, and now they will not have to start their own journey. So whilst we have this time, we make sure the next generation is being fared well. That's why Sabavels goes into the schools, gets into the children and say, this is what you need to know. We don't just do cyber awareness. We go further to empower them, to help them in their public speaking, because whatever be the case, they're going to stand in front of people. They are going to have an audience to listen to what they have within them. So we help build these capacities of this young one so that they, when we hand over the baton to them, can run to their finish line. Thank you so much. Wow, that was great. That was great, Benjamin. I mean, amazing. We can't just be tired of listening to you. I mean, your words full of wisdom. And I know someone out there will be asking us, you have to let us know how they can get hold of Benjamin. How do they connect with you? What are the platforms people can get across to you? Right, so on LinkedIn, Benjamin Oswanza on LinkedIn. On Instagram is Ben Oswanza. On Facebook is Benjamin Oswanza. And YouTube is Benjamin Oswanza. Wow. So there you have it. Benjamin Owusu Owusu answer on the man's space, giving us a lot, a lot of wisdom, expertise, experience, and sharing it from the depth of his heart. And the whole room is filled with oxygen just as his name portrays. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate it. And for those who are watching, that's the man space. Dr. Kaz and I will be coming up with another amazing guest, just like as we do back to back. And then you cannot just but be, um, be glad whenever we bring all of this to you. Stay with us and then keep just engaging with our posts engage with our materials, our content as we bring them to you. Take good care. Appreciate it.